there, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates, and today marks the start of the first video of a series that I'm doing on how to use XLOOKUP formulas in your Excel worksheets. Uh, so we're going to be doing a mini series that will touch on some different um, areas and different ways that you can look XLOOKUP, which is a newer formula that it came out with it in Excel that um, kind of goes above and beyond everything that VLOOKUP used to do. And if you're used to watching uh, time-saving templates and using time-saving templates, um, we usually have spreadsheets that are already set up with all the formulas. And so you may not be too interested or too familiar with how some of these formulas work. But if you uh, are in a job or in an area where you do need to do a lot of uh, data checking or data validation of your your own information in Excel before you even get to the point of using a template. This formula can uh, speed up the process very much if you're working with large amounts of data, which some of our template users are, especially if you're working in the HR or compensation area, um, a lot of small businesses. So we're going to use a couple of the templates um, with sample data filled out, and I'm going to dive into how um, the XLOOKUP is, is working and also what makes it a little bit better or different than VLOOKUP. <clears throat> so these are the main areas that we're going to go over. Um, we're first going to touch on three things you need to do to use XLOOKUP, and then you can just get it working off the bat. There's also extra things XLOOKUP can do. We're going to touch on how to do the error handling. So if you get a, a pound NA, what to do, um, the other options for that. We're going to touch on returning multiple columns of data in the second video because um, we're keeping these mini videos for you so they're easier to digest. Um, but in this one, we're also going to talk about how XLOOKUP is not, um, can't break as easily as the VLOOKUP formula can break pretty easy. What to do with duplicates. We're going to talk about that in one of the next videos in the series. Um, and then looking at values to the left. I'll show you how to do that in this video. Um, so let me dive right into the example. So just so you get an idea, my templates are usually color coded. So the gray cells are formulas that are usually calculating something or referencing something on a different page. So there's several pages linked together. So this would be where you copy and paste performance ratings and employee ID and then a bonus key. I've already pre-filled out some sample information so that we can have some sample data to work with and even got some really good names listed out here. So the gray cells formulas, the green cells need to be there for the formulas to calculate. And then if it's just white, that's just extra. There's also some hidden columns because I'm trying to make it look a little bit more simpler for this example. So right now we have a VLOOKUP right here that we're using to pull in the performance rating. And if you look up here in the bar, it looks really long because we're using if is error to remove those NAs so that it can show zero instead of the pound NA. What I'm gonna do is create this same formula using XLOOKUP so you can see how it compares to that VLOOKUP formula. First, we'll go into here and pull up the XLOOKUP uh, I like to use the boxes. You could also type this in and fill it out. If you're just using XLOOKUP for the first time, the box kind of explains what each argument is. So you'll see that there's three arguments right here in bold. Those are the ones that are required. And then there's an additional three that are optional. So we're going to just start out doing just the required arguments at first so you can see how much easier it is. So the lookup value, this is 
pretty much exactly the same as in VLOOKUP. We're gonna go over here and grab the employee ID. So nothing's changed there. Then if we go to lookup array, we are now going to go over to the performance ratings tab because I wanna pull in the performance rating for the employee ID. And then so from here, we're only gonna highlight one column, the employee number. So we're telling it match the lookup value to employee number to the employee number here. With VLOOKUP, we would be highlighting like an entire column or all three columns if we wanted to get that performance rating. With, with XLOOKUP, we only highlight the one column that we're matching. And then with return array, we'll go back and we'll highlight just the one column that we want to return, which is the performance rating. So these are the only arguments that are required. With VLOOKUP, we would still have to tell it to be an exact match. We would have to enter zero or false. And with XLOOKUP, it's exact match by default. So we don't have to worry about that. And we also don't have to enter the column count at all. We're just telling it exactly which column we want. So we don't have to worry about that column count like we have in VLOOKUP. So right here, I had to tell it that it to pull over column three. Copy this down. So you'll see it pulls in the exact same result up here, and then it's a much shorter and simpler formula, which is nice. It, it Right now, we're pulling in the NAs so instead of a zero. So we can fix that without using the if error formula that you'll see I have added here. So to do this, I'm gonna go back in to the box, and we would just enter a zero right here for if not found. You could enter a name, you could put new hire, you could, you could even put another formula right here. So if it wasn't found there, do another look up on another page to see if you can find it there. You could do something like that. So really a lot of options with that. So there we go. Now it is an exact match to that other formula we used, but again, it's a lot faster in a shorter, easier formula. So the other thing I wanted to show you with the difference between the XLOOKUP and VLOOKUP is that XLOOKUP is not going to break when we insert a column into the source. So let's go to the performance rating page and you'll see we have the data here. Now, if a lot of times we do paste special and paste values so that the lookup is no longer active and that avoids the problem of broken formulas. But say we want to keep the formula active and then we also want to make changes in here and I want to come in here and put something else, time in job or um, position. How long have they been in their current job for? Once I insert that column, it's going to break the VLOOKUP. So you'll see now everything has changed to zeros here, but XLOOKUP is still pulling in the right performance rating. And then if we were to enter some amount, so four years, two years, the VLOOKUP is now pulling in wrong information. So we definitely don't want to pull in the wrong information. So XLOOKUP kind of helps make that a little bit more foolproof. Okay, so I hope that gave you a good idea of how to use XLOOKUP and maybe you're getting more ideas of ways you can use this formula when you're um, working on your worksheets. Stay tuned for the next videos that are coming out in this series for how to use the XLOOKUP formula because we're also going to touch on how to return multiple columns of data with one single formula and also what to do with duplicates and also um, going into the match mode. So there's a few other things we can do with XLOOKUP, so we'll be diving into that next. But until next time, don't forget that I'm here to help you streamline and save time when it comes to using Excel spreadsheets. And if you like the channel, feel free to subscribe. And I'd also like to invite you for um, to check out our free resources that we have at timesavingtemplates.com slash free resources. And we've got three main um, areas for um, a small business pricing template, 
rental property. Um, we have a, a free template with that. And then we also have a compensation metrics cheat sheet, which is designed for human resources or compensation professionals. And then if you scroll down, we also have a free get started with Excel. If this was very advanced and you want to go back to the basics and start from there, we also have several videos to help you get started with all the basics that you want to know with using Excel. So thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Thanks.